Welcome back to my series on the LA2 compressor. This is not a restoration project. There is no attempt going to be made to use the exact same specifications and the exact same part source, so on and so forth. Again, this is not a restoration project. What this project is about is to use the concepts from the LA2 compressor because they're still very good. It probably is better than most other compressors which are digital that are on the market now. So if you like analog to protect your sound, this is the circuit for you. I've taken the original schematic, which you can find anywhere on the web, and I've outlined the building blocks to the original circuit. Now then, there are some variances between the very first LA2 compressor and the subsequent LA2 and and three. Here's, here's the basic components. We've already discussed the power supply in a previous video. The input allows you to have a 600 or 250 ohm input and a high impedance out. So basically that's a direct box. Passive direct box. There's a passive direct box out. It takes a high impedance out and converts it back to a 600 or 250 ohm load. The compressor consists of the EL panel that we've shown before. That's this, and it needs somewhere around 100 volts to drive it, which is why we have the side chain with this pentode driving it. The resistors, this photo I, photo resistor, is this NSL 5910s that we're going to use. So the signal will come in. We'll discuss this a little bit more later. It goes into a simple amplifier. They're not biased. You're not going to get a hundred gain on this. It's not set up for that. You don't want a lot of gain through here. What you want with this piece is to take whatever signal loss is coming in through because we're going through a limiter and the side chain back up. We want to just bump it up a little bit. So it's not important to just have high gain, but some gain. So here we are. We've got a basic simple amplifier. It goes into a negative feedback circuit. This is basically a white follower and it feeds it back to the input signal to the cathode of the tube coming in. The reason for a negative feedback is that the tubes do not operate linearly. Let me illustrate why we need a white cathode follower. Again, it's all about reducing or helping the power supply rejection ratio on a tube curve. They are curves. It's very, there's a lot of pronounced curve here. There's some pronounced curve up here. And in the middle, it is not linear. It is not straight. Most people wrongly assume that when they have a tube curve, you got this curve here, they assume it's straight here and it curves off again. If I were to really to emphasize that, you're basically looking at something more like this. It's, it, there's an inflection point here on the tube curve and while white follower does is try to straighten this out and what they have now a white cathode follower is a push-pull design it does not need a a phase splitter up ahead and it is a low impedance output what makes this one a little different is that unlike a typical white follower a white follower normally doesn't have a signal going both into the grid and to the plate of the bottom tube. This one is actually doing the amplification and this is providing some regulation. If you want to really straighten out, you would actually take a pair of these and push it up and push it up. Just connect them in series and the more series you have, the more linear it becomes, the lower the output impedance.
but because the high impedance line is coming into the grid and also coming to the cathode, really what this is doing is still serving as a power supply rejection ratio improver, if you will, but you have high impedance out. Now then, the other thing we've done with this circuit, we're not going to actually build this piece. We may do that a little later. This feeds back, it's so sampling the signal out, it samples that and brings it back into the cathode of the first stage of the amplifier. That's what's going to make the signal better because you're reducing the noise of the power supply. That's a good idea. This frequency tank, this resistor or, or sorry, capacitor, 50 to 380 PF. If you don't want to buy the pot, if you put 150 picofarads in there, it'll be a little darker tone. And if you go to 300, it brightens up. We're not going to use that piece. Now then, I've outlined for you, in green, that is a primary signal path. The reason it's primary is this signal and the from the output to input, you can, it's connected. It's in the direct line. What a side chain does is pull off the same signal source, come through a gate or a threshold, which then feeds it into the pentode, which is driving the EL panel, which then drives the photoresistors and changes their value. While this is connected to the signal, it's not really part of the direct signal path. What makes an LA2 work so well is that you have feedback control, very little amplification on, on this path through. If you did nothing else, an LA2 compressor, the original one, if you turned off the side chain and just used the throughput, you would clean up the noise on the line. We're not going to worry about that part. We're interested in this piece here. And the reason we're interested in that is the, this is actually the volume control. Here's your volume input to the, the amplifier circuit. So this is going to actually be an automatic volume control. So how's that work? Basically, you're looking at this again. So let me illustrate. As the light increases on the panel, here's the resistor, and the resistance increases, light increases. As light goes up, resistance goes down. On the volume control, let's look at that. So here's my volume, here's my, here's my resistance increasing this way, volume increases that way. As I decrease resistance, bringing the mid part of the you know, wiper of the pot up to this node here, more signal gets through. I have more si uh, less resistance, more signal, more resistance, less signal, because I'd start dropping down here more resistance. Back to the light, same thing. The more light there is, the less resistance. The nice thing about that is, if I'm looking at this, Here's when the EL panel goes dark. And let's say that the EL panel value when it's dark is 100, and the volume is also 100, it's down here. Then since they're in parallel, the resultant value is 50. So as it goes dark, it actually is moving this wiper closer to the signal input line. Therefore, see this is 2 amp. This is my signal, of course ground. So as the EL panel goes dark, more resistance, resist, resistors in parallel, lesser value is synthetically moving this wiper closer to the signal. Now then, as the EL panel lights up and it approaches zero and the volume control is set at 100, then it's 100, so as the panel becomes lighter, brighter, because your signals increase, the EL panel goes bright, it brings us down and decreases the volume because there's more resistance in the line. So knowing that, 
provide some interesting things that we can do. So, one of the things that we're thinking about doing is how do we incorporate that into an amplifier circuit, which I've already had built. So, on another video series, we built an overdrive circuit. One of the things that we can do with this, then, is that where the side chain com signal comes in here, we can actually pull that, volt that signal source here or here. Haven't determined yet what I want to do with that. And then, since this resistor is in parallel with the volume pot, if we go to the original overdrive, we this is a 100K fixed resistor. We can couple that across here. So, with the LA2 compressor, we can then pull the signal in here and couple across this resistor here in the output voltage or output pot, sorry, or we can just put it in line here. This is going to provide the amplification we need. Granted, there's a lot more amplification than the amplifier on the original LA2 compressor. But the nice thing about it is we can actually get an auto, auto volume control on this circuit and then maybe later we can also incorporate the power supply reduction ratio or, or negative feedback control and actually borrow this and control the input and clean up the B plus uh, signal noise that we have on the circuit. And with that, the next video should be, let's build it. So I, what I want to do there is I'm going to build this module first, and then we'll test it with a signal coming in, and we'll look at the uh, response to the EL, and hopefully uh, we can show you some test results with that.